Hey everybody, Jennifer Schaus here coming to you live today from Washington, D.C. And thank you for joining us in our webinar series for 2023. We are covering the top 40 profiles of the top 40 U.S. federal government contractors over the next 40 weeks. Well, actually, I should say 39. We're actually uh, uh, we're in our second week here. All of our webinars are complimentary and recorded. You can find our webinars on our website as well as our YouTube channel. Okay, uh, as I mentioned, yes, our uh, webinars are on our YouTube channel, uh, which now houses almost 600 complimentary government contracting webinars. If you're looking for the slides from today, you can just click on this link, which takes you over to SlideShare. I believe SlideShare, you can log in with your LinkedIn account. It doesn't cost you anything. And all of our PowerPoints from all of our webinars are listed there as well. Okay, just a quick uh, blurb about us. We do work with established federal government contractors, primarily helping them get onto the GSA schedule. Other services are listed here and on our website. In addition, as you know, we put on webinars, uh, also events and conferences throughout the year. As I mentioned, we have almost 600 uh, webinars on our YouTube channel with a little bit over 5,000 subscribers. Our newsletter uh, almost reaches reaches almost 25,000 subscribers, most of which are federal contractors. And we've got about the same amount on our LinkedIn. Um, these all do offer advertising and sponsorship opportunities. So if you're interested in reaching federal government contractors, just send us an email to the hello at jennifershouse.com email address and someone from the marketing team will respond to you with our media kit. Okay, uh, our quarterly event over at the Kennedy Center is coming up on Monday, March 20th. Um, there are There is one uh, sponsor table left. Um, we are expecting somewhere between 200 and 250 attendees. You can register for the event on our website, which is under the event section. Uh, these are just some of the uh, government agencies as well as the sponsors for the event. Um, the Virginia PTAC and the Greater Reston Chamber of Commerce are our in-kind sponsors that are helping us promote the event. Our paid sponsors uh, range from BidSpeed, Agile One Tech, Northwest Federal Credit Union, Crimson Phoenix, Fed First National Bank, and Federal Compass. Uh, so you can meet with them there. Uh, BidSpeed is also one of our sponsors in the webinar series for 2023. So we want to thank them for that. Uh, the federal agencies that will be on site are NAVAIR, NAVFEC, uh, Department of Ed, DHS, HHS, um, MBDA from Department of Commerce, the Metro, and Amtrak. Okay, so now we're going to talk about, uh, we want to thank our sponsors for the webinar series. Um, GovEvent uh, is the premier platform for posting and sharing events and webinars. Uh, they've been a, um, a customer of ours in the past uh, and vice versa, and we use their platform to post our events uh, as well as our webinar series. We also want to thank Tom Johnson and his team at Set Aside Alert. They're the go-to publication for contracting opportunities for small, women-owned, veteran-owned, hub zone, and 8A firms. You can visit setasidealert.com for more information. And also the Fairfax Economic Development Authority has an online calendar of events and webinars. And we want to thank them for posting our events and webinars throughout the years uh, on their calendar. Uh, the GovSpend FedMine uh, platform uh, is powering all of the data that we're using in this 2023 webinar series. So uh, please keep that in mind. Uh, and the GovSpend FedMine vision is to be the leading trusted source of data, analytics, and insight for organizers buying and selling in the public sector. The FedMine Federal Solution integrates data from 18 federal data sources and sets and creates a single convenient database that places the key data points at your fingertips. GovSpend uh, actually began as a spending and uh, PO database, specifically within the state, local, and education sector. And today, the databases combined include contract opportunities with thousands of entities at federal, state, local, and educational organizations. Um, FedMine was acquired by GovSpend in 2021, 
and the combined platform now empowers teams to make smarter decisions. So we want to thank GovSpend and FedMind providing the data in the webinar series this year and also in previous years. The Virginia PTAC at uh, Procurement Technical Assistance Center at George Mason University offers free one-on-one -on -one counseling to establish government contracting firms in Virginia on federal, state, and local procurement topics. If you're interested in learning more, just use the links provided on the slide to explore services, review some homework recommendations, register for live training, and find useful links to agencies and other self-directed learning. Online resources and group trainings are free with no restriction on your business location. One-on-one -on -one counseling is limited to eligible client companies. You've got some contact information there. Also, just make a note that uh, the PTACs are going to be changing their name over to Apex Accelerators. Uh, the Greater Reston Chamber of Commerce uh, has a monthly GovCon Council meeting uh, that allows you to network with government contracting peers, learn about upcoming events and opportunities, and help to shape future programming. These meetings take place on the fourth Tuesday of each month at 8.30 a.m. at the Greater Reston Chamber of Commerce. As you can see, their next meeting is Tuesday, February 28th. You can email Alicia Field. Uh, her email address is there at the bottom if you want more information. Okay, uh, the GovCon Academy, uh, Government Contracting Academy is the GovCon industry's leading training provider for small businesses. They offer a comprehensive 25 course, uh, which includes 150 lessons training program for government contracting small business executives, addressing every aspect of leading a small business to success in the industry. The program also includes hundreds of business tools, processes, marketing templates, sample proposal sections that will accelerate your company's success. Uh, the program is 100% actionable and taught by proven uh, government contracting executives. Uh, the ISO Quick Cert program provides an easy, fast, and affordable path to ISO certification, and that'll help place your company in the top 1% of your competitors. As we mentioned, uh, Bid Speed has been a sponsor of many of our events and webinars in the past. So we wanna thank them for their participation. Uh, do you want help winning government contracts? Bid Speed helps and you win. Opportunities from every federal, state, local, public source in the United States. Need to find a teaming partner, incumbent point of contact, expiring contracts, et cetera. What about compliance matrix or a proposal template? Want a solution? Want a solution to win with your GSA schedule? Maybe an easier, better way? If you said yes, then log in at bidspeed.com. BidSpeed helps you succeed and is an official partner of the U.S. Small Business Administration's 7J Management and Technical Assistance Program. Get started today at BidSpeed.com. And you've got some contact information there at the bottom if, uh, if you need it. Uh, last but not least, for our sponsors, uh, FBC, the Federal Business Council, uh, we want to thank them for their continued participation and support of our webinars over the past few years. Events are the ultimate engagement channel to bring government and industry together. 68% of government personnel report that they attended more than one event each year. FBC has worked with the government and industry for 45 plus years to create gatherings where ideas are shared and to help government achieve its goals. This includes agency industry days, cybersecurity symposiums, tech expos, and offsite meetings. FBC FBC provides full life cycle meeting planning and event management. With over 5,000 meetings under their belt, FBC has the experience, systems, and personnel to make your next event exceptional. Learn more at fbcinc.com. Okay, so uh, now we're going to dig into our, our series. Uh, and without their sponsors, the series would not be complimentary. You would have to pay for attendance. So thank you for. Um, standing by as we uh, as we thank our sponsors. So about the series and our schedule, as I mentioned, the uh, series is recorded. If you sign up um, to follow our YouTube channel, you'll get alerts anytime we upload new webinars. Uh, and the PowerPoints are all on the SlideShare site. Both are complimentary. Uh, this is a look at the full schedule. Uh, you can also go to our website to the section called Top 40. Um, but today we are covering Raytheon. Last week we covered Lockheed and um, you can see the schedule here. This is the full 40 weeks, which will run through November 15th, which is a Wednesday. The week that we skip is July 4th because I think July 4th is on a Tuesday and I'm assuming everybody will be 
um, out celebrating. Okay, so uh, we made the assumption that uh, anyone participating in this series that wants to learn more about the primes is most likely interested in subcontracting. So just a quick overview on subcontracting um, and some references that um, you should be at least aware of and know where to get uh, information on for the, uh, the FAR and the DFARs. Um, so the Federal Acquisition Regulations, which is the more or less the rule book that the government must um, abide by when they are making purchases and procurement. Uh, this link will take you to the webinar that we conducted on the FAR, and this link will take you over to the, the TFARs. So if you're um, dealing with any of these prime contractors and um, worried about uh, flow down clauses within Department of Defense or the FAR, uh, these links should help answer uh, any of your questions or at least give you a high level overview of kind of what you're signing up for in regards to subcontracting. Uh, we've also got some other webinars on subcontracting. We kicked off this series with uh, a bunch of heavy hitters in the industry. We covered six various topics within subcontracting ranging from market research to strategy, marketing, legal perspective, pricing, and compliance. Um, and we've got over, um, well, uh, a lot of webinars here on subcontracting. So um, the, the more educated you are on the topic, I think the more successful that you'll be. Okay, some best practices. Uh, you always wanna lead with your value proposition. If you're leading with your um, set aside designation, uh, your 8A, your hub zone, your veteran owned, your women owned, uh, that's great, but there's thousands, well, hundreds of thousands of companies that also have those check boxes. So define what you do and do well. Uh, and let that be your, your guide. Um, and you then want to identify the opportunities and be very specific, not that you just wanna do business with Northrop Grumman or Raytheon or Lockheed, uh, but define the specific opportunity, that solicitation, that RFP, RFQ, where you are adding value. And value can be defined here as any, uh, anything that's listed there from your past performance to perhaps having uh, the best prices. Um, and you also want to use the tools that are out there. The federal government market uh, is so unique because there is so much free data out there um, on any of these websites that we've got listed, sam.gov, usaspending.gov, fpds, um, and then plenty of obviously the, uh, the paid data aggregators uh, that offer the monthly subscription plans. So use data to make decisions to define where you're going to spend your time, your effort, uh, and your energy. And I think you'll be more successful and proactive versus being reactive to the market. Um, on that same uh, note, again, just doing your homework. Um, once you have defined an opportunity and you know who the incumbent is, uh, make sure that you know everything and anything about that company, that you're signed up for their newsletter, that you're getting Google News alerts, maybe that company is um, selling one of their business sections off, maybe they're in the process of a merger and acquisition where they're purchasing another company, uh, maybe they're on the front page of the Wall Street Journal for something positive, something negative, make sure that you know everything about them. Your capability statement should be customized towards that opportunity as well as to the partner. So you don't wanna just hand them a bland um, CAPE statement, uh, you want to make sure that you are being specific. Um, once then you have all this information uh, in front of you and you kind of have a, a little bit of a strategic plan here, this obviously is not comprehensive, um, but make sure you then spend the time to go over to the company's website, register as a small business in their vendor database, sign up for you know any of their uh, newsletters, look at the events that they're attending, the associations that they are members of, get involved, find a way to um, immerse yourself in the company and be able to shake a hand with the um, pertinent people within the company. Um, you wanna look for SBLOs, which are your small business liaison officers, which uh, are a great entry point into a company, but they're not gonna be the decision makers. Your decision makers are typically your PMs and um, program directors, program managers, uh, people uh, with those sort of titles in these larger organizations. Uh, but please do all of that homework before you contact them. They are not there to do your homework or tell you what opportunities the company is getting ready to bid on. Uh, that information is public more or less. Um, so please use it and make yourself um, a little bit more unique than the other 100 companies that are 
hundreds of companies that are just um, contacting the SBL, SBLOs um, for that information because uh, you should be able to uh, capture that yourself. Okay, so today we're talking about uh, Raytheon Technologies. They came in as the number two uh, company when we um, did the search with our partners at GovSpend slash FedMine, uh, who again are providing the data in the webinar series this year. So just some basic information, uh, you've got the link to their website, you should know the mission statement, and this may seem very generic, but so many companies miss this. You should know the company website, who's the CEO, the chairman, uh, and other uh, information, including the stock price. You know, are, are we seeing fluctuations? Um, if so, why is it, you know, if you look back a couple years, are there, is their stock going up or down based on, um, work that they've done in the government sector due to COVID, uh, what's happening within the company. Um, so just be cognizant of that. It, you know, it's, again, just good market research and information to have to make you uh, more intelligent about these companies that you're doing, potentially going to be doing business with. Uh, if you then have done your homework and you're ready to register, um, on their website as a small business. This will take you to their supplier diversity section. And uh, I think it's about the middle of the page. You can scroll there to register as a small business. Again, make sure you have a reason for doing this just by going to each of these 40 companies and registering as a small business uh, within their database is not going to get you too far just because maybe you are 8A, women owned and, a, and in a hub zone. And let's say perhaps you're also veteran owned. That's great, but if you have no past performance, if you don't have any value that you're bringing to the table, then you're just like everybody else. So uh, make sure that you have something that um, is worthwhile of value that you are presenting to the company. Okay, so we're gonna look at the, um, the unique identifier for Raytheon Technologies. This is for the parent company. Uh, and a lot of these large businesses are going to have subsidiaries and sister companies that will uh, almost uh, or almost all the time have very similar company names. So this is the uh, the UEI um, for the parent company, Raytheon. Uh, as part of your market research, you also want to uh, look at their LinkedIn page, make sure that you're following that. Um, you should be spending a lot of time on LinkedIn. That's where uh, the government as well as business is um, is interacting. If you're following their page, you're then going to get uh, notifications of uh, newsworthy events, of events that they are, uh, events, conferences, uh, seminars where folks from Raytheon are, are attending or presenting. You want to be there, especially if they are presenting on a topic that um, uh, is aligned with your um, your industry, your, your value uh, proposition. Um, so again, make sure you're following the company. It looks like they've got quite a few employees on uh, LinkedIn. So um, it can behoove you to connect with them as well as the SBLOs. These are the small business liaison officers. Um, when you click on that button connect, it gives you the option to send a message. Uh, there should never be an instance where you are not sending a message. You should have a reason. Dear Andrew, dear Patrick, dear Frederick, dear uh, Terry, whoever it is that you're contacting uh, here at uh, Raytheon that uh, that you are contacting them for a reason. I see that you're in Albuquerque, New Mexico, and I noticed that there's a contract coming up for recompete in June of 2023. Um, and I wanted to connect and talk to you. I'm trying to get in touch with the program manager. That should be your message. Something specific, a date, a um, uh, specific opportunity, location, uh, have a distinct reason. Don't just click on connect and send your message because um, that's what everybody else is doing. Okay, well, now we're going to look uh, more, um, a little bit more granularly now at Raytheon and look at the uh, prime contracts on the civilian side. And civilian is anything that's not DOD um, that Raytheon has. So uh, these are the contracts that Raytheon has directly with the government. Again, civilian. So pretty consistently uh, over the past five fiscal years, and obviously 2023 is going to be low because we're just um, uh, in the second quarter of 2023. Uh, but you can see that DOT is coming in um, pretty consistently over the years, uh, aside from uh, Commerce back in 2019, who kind of led the way 
for the Raytheon contracts. Um, so the reason we went back five years is because uh, I'm sure everybody remembers COVID was more or less um, kind of peaked in 2020 and 2021 fiscal years. So if we just went back two or three years, I think that's going to give a um, not a very clear uh, or broad picture of uh, the work that Raytheon or any company really uh, has done over the years. So I think it's important to look at spikes and dips during the, the COVID uh, years, which again, I'll define as 2020 and 2021 fiscal. Um, so looking at kind of what happened in 2019, taking into consideration uh, the pandemic and then looking at kind of where we are now with 2022 and 2023. Um, and obviously uh, you can see that um, most, uh, they did a, a, a nice job in 2019, just cumulative, um, where that fiscal year had the highest dollars. Um, but 2023, um, like you said, we're only partially in. Um, so some of those numbers could change. Um, so in the event that your business aligns with uh, Raytheon as far as just what they are doing, um, you also want to look at the intersection of where they're doing it. So if you have some contacts or contracts um, at transportation or commerce or uh, even, let's say, HHS, where they've done just a little bit of, of work back in 2019, this could be helpful. Maybe they are um, trying to pick things up back at HHS. So just be cognizant of, of the numbers and um, just because, uh, let's say, the work that they're doing at, let's say, State Department uh, comes in kind of low. Uh, that may be a good strategy to pursue, obviously, with some research behind it, because everyone's probably going after the, the bigger contracts at um, DOT or, um, or NASA. Um, okay, now we're going to look uh, at the prime contracts on the defense side. So this is the non-civilian and uh, Navy and Air Force uh, are the strongest and fairly consistent over the last five fiscal years. Um, different from uh, the civilian side, it looks like 2020 fiscal year uh, is where uh, the bulk of the revenue came in for uh, DOD. Um, but again, 2023 is still uh, underway and DOD is uh, typically, I think it's three, if not six months uh, delayed in their reporting to FPDS and, uh, and the SAM database. So. Um, just keep that in mind as you're looking at numbers. Um, and also just keep in mind, uh, DOD regulations are going to be different from civilian um, FAR requirements. So make sure that uh, if you decide to pursue any subcontracts that Raytheon has at any of the DOD um, departments or agencies, that you do meet all of those requirements. So you may want to go back to that link that we had for the DFARs. Uh, the Defense Federal Acquisition Regulations and just make sure you're familiar with what's required or, or what's not, whether you need clearances or um, other uh, other boxes checked off there. The top five NICS codes for uh, Raytheon, these should really not be uh, a big surprise um, for probably the, the bulk of the, I'll say top at least 20 contractors that we're going to look at. Most are going to be heavy in uh, DOD. Um, and the dollars here are in billions with a B. Uh, and some fluctuation. Um, the colors represent the fiscal year. Uh, 2023 is really just a blip again because we've just started there. But as you can see, some um, some dips um, in 2022 um, in regards to uh, some of the uh, NAICS codes here that they are focused on. And then again, just keep in mind uh, 2020 and 2021, some of the work that they did with it, which was probably related to um, COVID or responding to um, COVID related uh, work. And now we're gonna look at the place of performance where um, sometimes it's important, sometimes it's not. You don't always, uh, because of technology, you don't always need to be located exactly where the contracts are taking place. However, if there are industry days or if there's some, something in the solicitation that requires that the vendor must be located within a five mile radius of the place of performance, um, this can be helpful. Um, and you're also gonna find that these companies uh, will probably have business locations um, 
without a doubt uh, in these areas. So uh, you're more likely then to meet uh, people from the company if that's uh, in fact your goal uh, and part of your strategy. So uh, Arizona, Mass, California, you guys can read the numbers here uh, and see um, uh, kind of where the, the work is taking place. Again, just because the bulk of it's taking place in Arizona doesn't mean that uh, part of that, those dollars aren't allocated towards some work that can be done remote, um, but uh, we just thought it would be important to give you that overview. And now we're going to look at the top 10 subcontractors. Um, and some of these companies, as you'll see here, particularly uh, Aerojet and Alliant Tech Systems, uh, are listed twice. And sometimes uh, this is going to be because uh, these companies either have subsidiaries or sister companies, um, or that the reason that they're showing up this way is because that they have. Um, for separate industries uh, or NAICS codes where the um, uh, the work was uh, generated. So P Pacific Ceramics uh, Incorporated uh, obviously is at the top. And so there is nothing that would stop you or anyone else from being a tier three or tier four subcontractor, but keep in mind that uh, there could and uh, very likely can be far flow down clauses that flow down uh, to all of the subcontractors. So just because you can't get in with, let's say Raytheon, uh, you could be a subcontractor to any of the other companies listed here uh, because there's still a lot of money here on the table uh, in the, the billions of dollars. So um, we're just giving you a high level overview so that way you can take this information and continue your research even further, either through your paid subscription of any of the uh, great data aggregators that are out there or by just simply conducting your own research on SAM or FBDS or USA Spending or um, any other of the, uh, the government databases that you're using. Okay, and now we'll look at the, um, uh, by agency, the subcontracts awarded by Raytheon. So these are gonna be the contracts over uh, 750,000. Um, and we did see that, and this is cumulative of, or covers both civilian and defense. Um, so Navy uh, comes in at the top, which we saw on, on some earlier slides. Uh, I think Navy and Air Force, um, but these are where the contracts for 750,000 or above uh, came into play. At the bottom, you've got Homeland Security and, uh, and the VA. Again, these are still billions of dollars and they're not uh, broken out, but you'd have to, again, dig into those contracts uh, through Kind of simple searches then on SAM or any of the data aggregators that you're you're using. So just keep in mind that most of the competition is probably um, you know kind of looking at the Navy because there's more dollars, more opportunity there, but there's also going to probably be more competition. So um, don't leave, don't forget about you know commerce, transportation, or um, some of the others where maybe there's less competition um, and you can stand out uh, a little bit easier. And now we're going to look at the contracts. Again, these are just the 750,000 and above contracts awarded by Raytheon and segmented by the industry. Um, so similar to when we looked at the NAICS code, that was just Raytheon as a whole. These are now the subcontracts and it typically mirrors uh, what um, the company does, but uh, this obviously gives you more specificity. So you've got the, the guided missiles at the top, which also was in the uh, the top industry codes when we looked at those by fiscal year, all the way down to R&D. Um, and again, these are still uh, billions of dollars and these are just the top 10. So I'm sure that there are more than just 10 um, industry codes. So again, this is high level overview to give you some guidance, some direction on which way to take your research, assuming that you've um, perhaps done some homework to find that your company um, does bring value to Raytheon, either in some of these industry codes or because of a relationship that you have at a particular department or agency um, or some other value prop that you are bringing to them. And these are the top five subcontracts uh, reported. And you'll see here that uh, what shows up here for the subcontracts reported are going to be mostly names that you know. Um, and again, companies that are 
the primes that have the contracts over $750,000 are then required to have a subcontracting plan for that 750K. And they can award a subcontract to a large business. Um, it doesn't always happen that way. Sometimes it does, as you can see here, um, Lockheed, Boeing, Northrop Grumman, Booz, and, um, and the University of New Hampshire. I'm assuming that's probably an R&D contract just based on the nature of the business that, um, that Raytheon is in and the slide that we looked at previously. So again, there's nothing that would stop you or prevent you from being a subcontractor as a tier, um, tier two, three or four subcontractor to any of these companies listed here. Okay, uh, the top five VWACs, these are the government-wide acquisition contracts that uh, Raytheon is on or that any company can, uh, we'll say, quote unquote, apply to get on to then uh, establish services with associated pricing at more or less set or ceiling prices that the government can then purchase from. And there's, there's plenty of GWACs out there. Most companies just, um, I will say uh, directly think of GSA schedules as the uh, as the premier GWAC and uh, GSA just does a great job of marketing themselves but there are plenty of other contracts that are out there um, that are department-wide or agency-wide uh, and the top five this is again by revenue uh, that Raytheon shows up as holding so um, you've got the uh, ATSP4 uh, NASA Soup, uh, GSA Alliance, GSA Oasis, and the IAC Mac Pool One. Um, I'm not positive on the IAC Mac Pool One. Probably a simple Google search would tell you that. Um, where that uh, falls, it could be GSA, but it sounds to me like it's more maybe DOD related. Um, and same thing, same thing with the AS. Or I'm sorry, ATSP4. Um, Again, just look at how those uh, numbers have fluctuated over the various fiscal years. Um, so if you are, let's say, pursuing uh, a NASA opportunity and Raytheon shows up, it would probably behoove you to look at the NASA soup contract uh, and see if you can get information on what it is Raytheon is providing there as well as their prices. Uh, because if you wanna be a subcontractor to them, it will be very important for you to look at your prices versus uh, Raytheon's prices because the prime will uh, primarily dictate the rates that uh, they will be giving to you. And it usually ends up being kind of a take it or leave it situation. So uh, do your homework there. Same thing with Alliant, Oasis, and these others. Uh, again, high level overview that will get you started to then uh, find where the intersection of your your company, your capabilities intersect with Raytheon's capabilities, where your relationships within the government intersect with theirs, where your contracts uh, intersect with what they are doing and or complement uh, what they are doing. Okay, and now we'll look at the contracts that are expiring that are over 750 and above. Again, that should be kind of a ding ding for these are the um, contracts that require the sub K plan, the contracting plan. Um, and so you've got the, the UIE number there on the left-hand side is going to be different uh, because these are going to be the um, subsidiaries of the parent company that we, um, that we are looking at today. Uh, and then you've got the, the contract number and the, and the total sales. So um, we don't have the number as far as like the number of contract actions listed here on the total sales, but um, a little bit of you know, copy and paste uh, the contract number into SAM to get some details will certainly help you. And the top 10 agencies um, are pretty much going to mirror what we looked at earlier uh, where these contracts are. So the Navy and the Air Force, um, again, are coming in at kind of the no number one and two position. If your company doesn't have the um, kind of DOD uh, requirements met, uh, then maybe you wanna drop down to Commerce or DOT or, or DHS. And this is just that um, that graph um, in a in a larger format, so you don't have to put your glasses on like I do. Um, okay, and that uh, that wraps it up for Raytheon. So again, just a high level overview to kind of let you know where they are, where they're playing, um, and to give you some data to then continue your homework and your research either uh, by using any of the multiple sites that are out there, uh, SAM, FBDS, USA Spending, or any of the great data aggregators that are out there uh, providing a much easier to use platform 
uh, and notifications for RFPs. Again, today's webinar was uh, complimentary and recorded. You can get the recording on our YouTube channel and the slides are on SlideShare. Uh, next week, we cover general dynamics and here's the full list that takes us through Wednesday, November 15th. Uh, again, we wanna remind you that our spring foray is Monday, March 20th over at the Kennedy Center, two hours of networking. This is not a conference. There are no speaking opportunities. Um, and here are a list of our sponsors who we want to thank, as well as the government departments who will be there, NAVAIR, NAVFAC, Department of Ed, Commerce, HHS, MBDA, Amtrak, and Metro. And uh, we will have the recording again on our website, usually within about 24 to 48 hours. The best thing to do, though, is follow our YouTube channel and you'll get a notification as soon as today's webinar has been uploaded. Um, and that is a wrap, and we hope to see you next Wednesday uh, for the next webinar. Thanks for attending.